Now I'm sure many of you know the big things that are coming in with Halo Infinite Season 3 update. We have three new maps, the Bandit Rifle and Shroud Screen, the SPI Armor Core, the Chimera Firewall Fracture Core, a brand new Battle Pass, and a whole lot more. But there's a lot of things extra going into this update that you might not remember or have missed. So this is everything you didn't know was happening for Season 3. But there's one really big problem, and it's the fact that 58% of you are not subscribed to the channel. If you want to know everything that's happening with Halo Infinite Season 3 and beyond, Make sure to follow the channel and keep you guys up to date. So let's get right into those details. So I'm sure many of you have seen the content roadmap for season three, but there's one important thing that's missing from that image. And that's the fact that VIP is no longer part of the content roadmap. Community manager Unicheck recently responded to Fooded Ghost, an awesome Halo YouTuber, stating that VIP has been shifted in favor of landing some other modes in the future. You guys got to check out Hex Gaming. The Hex Gaming are basically a company that modifies the real deal controllers for PlayStation or Xbox and they make it into whatever you'd like. You can choose a decal, your colors on the joysticks, like literally every aspect of the controller you can decide what you want to look like to have your ultimate gaming experience. The controller that they sent me is the Ultra X controller. Now the really cool thing about this is it has these paddles on the back right as you would expect any good controller to have. The thing is though you can have six different profiles you can remap these panels to and it's all color coded on the back so all you need to do is just double tap the button change the color profile completely different remapping for those back buttons and since this is a high-end gaming controller you also have the concave or convex sticks you can have in your controller and you can also have the long or short versions personally i like the long version right there on my right stick it gives me a little bit extra travel distance so i can have a little bit higher sensitivity you can even adjust the triggers on it my triggers on this are like basically pressing a button it's not even like a trigger pull anymore and i love that so if you guys want to check out hex gaming yourself well check out the pinned comment here, here in the video or in the description to get yourself five percent off if we use my code chemicalx at checkout plus i get a little kickback and help support the channel but let's get right back into those details so likely we'll see vip return but season four or later and uni does say i promise that the shift in priorities is better aligned with the community feedback one bit of feedback being the mode infection we've seen a lot of leaks of it come around recently and we've even seen some data miners say that infection might even come with season three but later on though all signs are pointing towards season four for previous data miner information but of course once I get some concrete information about that, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. Halo Infinite is also going to be down for a considerable amount of time for the Season 3 update. Saying from 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Halo Infinite will launch in an offline state. So most like multiplayer, academy, and customization will not be accessible, but you'll still be able to play the campaign offline. This is a rather standard procedure when it comes to major updates coming to Halo Infinite, so nothing crazy there. So you might have to go without your Halo fix for quite some time, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. And like we stated at the beginning of this video, we do know the maps of Cliffhanger, Chasm, and Oasis are going to be coming in with the Season 3 update, but there are more maps on the way. As stated previously by 343, a remake within Forge of the map Plaza from Halo 5 is coming in with Season 3, though we haven't seen anything of this map. And Community Manager Unishek stated that the Forge remake of Plaza will be landing during Season 3, so likely this will be some type of a mid-season update, which I'm all for, just more content to kind of freshen things up a little bit. But one map that you saw within the Season 3 trailer actually isn't going to be in the game. And that map is Andy's art room that we saw for the community collection section of the trailer. 343's lead of Forge, Michael Shore, did state that Andy's art room is not planned to be part of the community collection. It's an inclusion in the trailer because of its aesthetic of the map. So basically they thought the map looked really cool and would show really well in a trailer, but it's actually not going to be playable within matchmaking. While we're on the topic of maps, there's there's a great feature now coming in for Halo Infinite's Forge mode. Season 3 will be bringing editable dev maps into Forge. So that means all the new maps are coming in as well as the previous maps that were released. This is absolutely fantastic when it comes to Forge creations. One, it helps with entry level forging so you can kind of just jump into a regular map and kind of edit it how you like to kind of get the handle of Forge. Two, it might give the potential for a new take on a current map. For example, we could see Behemoth come back into the swap playlist because Forgers could just edit the map with better lines of sight so then you won't get sniped across the map by battle rifles. 343 also recently made a massive change to the skill-based matchmaking within Halo Infinite and the head of HGS Tashi recently went out to Twitter to kind of talk about this saying based on player feedback they deployed an update 
to ranked playlists in Halo Infinite that match players based on CSR rather than hidden MMR. Now I know this update happened just before the release of Season 3, but it's so close it might as well be part of it. And this drastically changes the ranked experience within Halo Infinite. Though Tashi did state that team balancing is still using MMR. Though it seems like with the recent change of leadership over at 343 that a lot of barriers have been removed to where they can start making the game more towards fan feedback. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a loosening of skill-based matchmaking when it comes to social matches as that's the core audience of Halo. And if ranked Halo, where it's supposed to be the most competitive, is looking to reduce the effect of hidden matchmaking rank, why wouldn't they bring it over to social? Well, if 343 makes any changes to their matchmaking algorithms, I'll definitely let you guys know here on the channel. In our recent video on the channel here, I talked about the nerf that's happened to the VK-78 Commando from going from an 8-shot kill to a 9-shot kill, and how the Plaza Pistol is getting an increase to its charge rate as well as its tracking ability nerfed a little bit. But in rank, we'll also see a reduction in ammo count when it comes to the Bulldog, Heatwave, Shock Rifle, and Stalker Rifle. Now, a massive change is coming to player awareness where enemy footsteps are now harder to hear at distance, but easier to hear when very close. This is going to drastically help your spatial awareness of where players are around you. And with Halo Infinite's prioritization technology when it comes to audio, you should be hearing footsteps of enemy players louder than your teammates and so you'll be able to identify if you're going to get attacked real quick. In Ranked alone, the Mangler Energy Sword and Pulse Carbine will be removed, but later on in Season 3 we should see some changes to the Disruptor and the Spike Grenades. What was mentioned is that they're looking to nerf the Disruptor to make it a little bit less effective and the spike grenades should have a little bit less random spread when exploding. Now, to what degree these changes will affect those two bits of the sandbox? Well, I'll let you guys know here as soon as we get that information. Massive improvements are happening to networking and desync. As I know, I see the comments all the time saying, oh my God, desync is the worst thing to happen with this game. And I would agree, it's incredibly frustrating. Now, I did cover this in detail in my previous video, but the summary of it is less rubber banding, better melees, and ammo count should be reading correctly. And those same changes should be coming over to the campaign side of things when it comes to network co-op. There's no talk about being shot around corners, as that's actually not desync, that's lag compensation. But could we see a tightening of that lag compensation within Halo Infinite so you don't get shot around corners so often? Well, if you do, I'll let you guys know. Now, when it comes to what you can play within the launch of Season 3, there are some significant changes to the playlists. So day one of Season 3, you should see Arena Unlimited. This is going to be a playlist strictly of Chasm and Cliffhanger, playing a variety of modes of Escalation, Slayer, CTF, King of the Hill, Slayer, Strongholds, and One Flag CTF. Though one week after the launch of Season 3, you'll see that mode get switched out for BTB Unlimited, which will be just the map Oasis, where you'll be playing a variety of modes of BTB Escalation, Slayer, CTF, Slayer, Fiesta, Fiesta Total Control, and Total Control. But you should see the new maps and content being featured more within Season 3's update. As 3 for 3 stated, saying we've also updated most of the playlists to feature Season 3's new content with an increased waiting for the start of the season. Now, one of my favorite changes within this entire update is that for Rank, which is my favorite mode to play, your placement matches are going to go from 10 to having to play down to 5. So you only need to play 5 matches to get your rank to finally start grinding some Halo. Now one feature that was promised before the release of Halo Infinite is actually finally making its way into the game and it's going to drastically improve the graphical quality of Halo Infinite and that being ray tracing finally coming in to Halo Infinite. Now I did cover this right when it first came out that this information was coming in. You can see how the shells are drastically improved when it comes to Halo Infinite utilizing ray tracing, which is gonna be just an awesome feature to have within the game. Finally get a chance to showcase the power of the Xbox Series X and S as well as your PC. Customization, yes, we can all expect to see new coatings and things like that coming into the game, but there's some specific coatings and armor sets I think a lot of Halo 5 fans are really going to enjoy. While at HCS Charlotte, they were able to go through and play and check out some customization and the pizza coating from Halo 5 is coming back into Halo Infinite, which I know a lot of people love the pizza coating, so there's your chance. And I covered this in a previous video, but the watchdog coding right over here is getting an update to be a true representation of what we saw pre-release of Halo Infinite. Now the current watchdog is going to stay within Halo Infinite, it's just going to be renamed, and the true watchdog codings are going to be added into Season 3. Now I'm sure many of you have seen the new customization coming with the HCS bundles of Year 2 for HCS, and these do look amazing. These are for the SBI Armor Core specifically. This also does mean that we will see the previous 
bundle be vaulted is the way they put it, which means most likely never coming back. And these bundles will have the coating for the Mirage, AKA the SBI Armor Core. You have a sniper coating, a nameplate emblem, as well as a visor. Also keep in mind that the money spent by players, the majority of that money does go to the org rather than Halo. So if you want to keep competitive Halo strong, well, I mean, that's one way to support. Now what the campaign team essentially cut from Halo Infinite, the only form of storytelling we're at the beginning are for narrative events. And 343 has been real quiet about this upcoming narrative event, but we finally got some information that's gonna be called the Mindfall event. It's gonna be coming in two parts. First part's coming in, in the first two weeks of season three and then later on in season three. So from March 7th to the 21st, the Mindfall narrative event delivers a free 10 tier event pass containing a variety of cosmetics to outfit your new SPI, AKA the Mirage Armor Core. So not only do you have a brand new 100 tier battle pass, but you also have a 10 tier battle pass you need to complete within the first two weeks. Talking about battle passes, the entirety 100 tier battle pass for season three has been revealed by players who are at the HCS Charlotte event and have a video right here showcasing the entire thing. So thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.